this thing is fun to drive, but it is a absolute rolling death trap. <laughs> oh, yes, woo, small children and animals beware. Here I come. I can't stop and I can't steer. Yes, <laughs> if I could go in a zigzag, any straight line, sort of, for a minute. Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. Uh, I thought I'd give you a, kind of a rundown of what we're going to be doing the next foreseeable ever, depending on just how much of a pain in the butt this ends up being. Uh, here we've got a 1948 Ford Super Deluxe, and uh, it is a running, driving vehicle. It doesn't run, it runs well, but it doesn't drive well. And, uh, it does stop for the most part. Uh, it will roll and move, but uh, the steering column is locked up, the steering gearbox is shot, the rear end is shot, uh, third gear is missing the synchro. So, and I like the patina, I don't know if I'm going to paint this thing or not, I may just clear it, leave it, I'm not sure yet exactly what we're going to do with the outside of it, but that's not super important at this point. We'll fix any of the structural rust we need. And here's the 67 Mustang. I just finished it up not too long ago, so she'll be up for sale. Because I'm not really a huge fan of Mustangs in general. I just kind of ended up with this one, did a bunch of work to it, got it fixed up. But I'm much more of a 40s, 50s guy, so now that I've got this little project, I'm really looking forward to getting to it and getting working on it. anybody planning to do a transplant on a 40s model Ford sedan using a Ford Ranger this is a single cab long bed 2000 Ranger 117 inch wheelbase uh, you'll notice I've got some grease marks on the fender here now uh, they're sort of important this rear one here this is where the firewall starts the middle one here of course is the center of the wheel and then this far forward one is the very end of the radiator support. Now, these are all very important things to know, the distance from here to here and from here to there, all very important. I've got all those measured out and I've re-measured them, transported, transfixed them, transposed them onto the 48 so I know about where we're at. Since I'm going to be trying to retain the wheel in the same position here on the 48 as it is on the Ranger, this is the center line mark for the 48. This is the exact center of the hub on the fender. Now the distance on the Ranger from, the, that, from this center mark of the hub to the end of the radiator support is marked here, very close to the front. But luckily headlights and all don't need an incredible amount of room to operate. Now you'll notice there's a, another line just to the left of that mark. That is the width of the radiator. And the radiator goes from right here at this point to this line here on the other side of the car. Now I know what you're thinking, well that's terrible, it's underneath the fenders. Well of course it is, it has to be it's much wider. But this opening is basically the full front of the car. And yes, that's a plastic grill, I'm trying to source an actual one. But, uh, and luckily, after doing some measuring, it looks like we're gonna have about a quarter to a half of an inch clearance between the bottom of this fender and the highest point on the radiator, which is the cap. 
And if that's not the case, well, I'm more than happy to shim these fenders and the entire body up a quarter or half an inch to make the clearance. My plan right now, and we all know how plans are, they tend to change, is to take the fenders off, obviously, roll the body out, but I'm going to make these panels, these wing panels, I don't know what you call them, these parts of the fenders because it's a two-piece fender, and if not, it will be. Take this part of the fender right here and make it removable. So I'll tie these in with hard mounts to the new chassis, the Ranger chassis, and make those filler panels removable so that I can access not only the air box that will be here on this side, on the passenger side from the Ranger, but also the radiator here. So I'll be able to fill and maintain and check all of that. And if I'm really lucky, I might be able to maintain the battery, but if not, I'm more than happy to move that to the trunk or anywhere else. So hopefully, and like I say, hopefully this will work because if you'll see, this is very close, very, very close to the front end of the car. Extremely close, actually. But if my measurements are at least three quarter right, which they may or may not be, there should be enough room. And if not, well, we're going to make room because we'll put the whole, we'll shim the whole body up high enough to clear the radiator. Because I don't want to buy an aftermarket radiator if I can help it because I'm trying to get this thing on the road again and driving and running for the least amount of money possible not strictly because I'm cheap but because there's no need to have to have a fifty thousand dollar hot rod just to go and enjoy the car shows and hang out with everybody and spend some time behind the wheel Okay, so back again, trying to decide which one of these I need to start taking apart first. Do I want to start pulling the front end and all off the 48, or do I want to start pulling the front end and all off of the 2000 Ranger? Now, I know the Ranger is going to need an impressive amount of cutting as far as the firewall and the pillars and all that good stuff, and of course this one will too, because I'm planning on using the firewall out of the Ranger here as the majority of the firewall on the 48. So I don't know, what do you think? Should I cut, should I start taking this one apart? Or should I start cutting this one apart? Oh, and by the way, I'm gonna save the bed, the doors, the hood, the fenders, bumper, grill, and I'll put all that stuff on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist so that if anybody wants it, they can come and get it. Because I'd rather them use it than just scrap it. And of course, the 48, I'll, uh, Take everything apart as carefully as possible so I can put it back together and have it look like a 48 again when I'm done, hopefully. Now for anybody who is wondering, the wheelbase on a 48 Ford is 114 inches, according to the internet and my tape measure. The wheelbase on this Ranger is 117 inches. So it's 3 inches different, which isn't a lot, and I'm not going to be cutting the frame, because the whole point of this is this is a really good running, driving truck. And I don't want to change any of the factory hardware that I don't absolutely have to because I want to leave everything factory so that it all works just as well underneath the 48 here as it did underneath this Ford Ranger. 
Now the three inches, I know you're worried about that because three inches, let me tell you, that'll make all the difference. On these, you can see the wheel sits pretty well where you'd want it to. It's about the center of the wheel well. And that's going to be how that's going to have to stay because of the measurements on the Ranger. You can see the grease line, grease pin marks I have all over this thing. It's from measuring the Ranger against this thing. Just to make sure proof of concept even fit first. Now the three inches is pretty much going to have to happen back here. Because if you'll notice, the wheel is actually sitting a little far forward in the wheel well. Which, you know, it looks fine, but the wheels on the Ranger are a little smaller than this. And moving them back about three inches is actually going to look okay. At least in my opinion, or we'll see once we get it on the body. But by that point it will be too late, so it will just have to be what it is. But luckily, moving this back about three inches is going to make, of course, more room at the front of this wheel well. If you'll notice here on the front, there's a fair amount of room on the front of this wheel well as well between the tire and the front of the wheel well. So hopefully it'll kind of balance that out and it won't look too ridiculous. Now I know there's a bunch of people right now yelling at their screen telling me that this is a terrible idea. And uh, yeah, they might be right. They probably are. But I'm going to do it anyway because I think it's going to be great to have a basically daily driver capable 48 Ford with air conditioning, power steering, OBD2, low miles, fuel injection, that I can just get in and go. Alright everybody, what do you think? Should we pull the 48 apart first, or should we pull the Ranger apart first? I'm not sure. Thinking maybe the 48, just so we can start to see exactly what kind of trouble we're going to get into. But maybe the Ranger, because I need to take some better measurements off those inner fenders and all. Just to make sure things are going to fit before I probably screw both these cars up beyond repair. Alright old girl, I, this hood's got to go. I've hit my head on you for the very last time. So go ahead and say ah! Alright. Now, got it loose. Now just put it wherever you want it. Well, all right then, you wanted to wear it as a hat. That wouldn't have been my first choice, but if that's where you wanted, then there, that's where it'll be. Now let's get these fenders off of here. This is a lot of bolts. I don't really have any desire to take these off though. No wonder. I channel my inner fawns. Let's just try it, let's just see. Hey! That didn't work. All right, hold on. All right. Hey. Woo! Look at that. That was easy. Inner and outer fenders already separated. She went ahead and put zip ties on her wiring to keep it out of the way. Wow! Thanks. That was super easy. Let's see if it works on the other side. All right. Here we go. Let's try it again. Hey. Well, look at that! That was even easier than the other side. As we all know, there's only one thing to do when you get a project to this particular point. Take it, run all over the neighborhood with your hood, your door, and your fenders off. True hot rod style.
day two now of the frame swap transplant for the 1948 Ford from the 2000 Ford Ranger single cab long bed. Uh, yesterday I got a little bit of work done, not a whole lot. Got the front end pulled off. It was pretty miserable, as you would expect. A bunch of 70 year old bolts. Found some rust, which is pretty exciting. I'll be fixing that later. Nothing too crazy, mighty, especially for the year, but found a big glob of Bondo. So that's pretty exciting. That's a nice, nice size hole there. So something we'll be cleaning all that out and getting it fixed up here in the next day or two. 